Welcome once again into Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. That's Vince, Vince LaRosa, Vince LaRose on uh, social media. I'm Max Bretos. And as I always like to do is I'm part of the Tourism Bureau here in Alhambra. Are you? What are they paying? Look at it, perfect timing. What are they paying you? So these big Singapore Airlines, these big jets, if you come here in Alhambra, these beautiful rolling hills, they come out here and they do a big turn and they head across the Pacific. I could watch that all day. So, another reason to check it out. Look, look at that in all its glory. That's, that's a big I one. Know, yeah, Perfect big timing. Point. It knew I was going to bring this up. You're such a child. You had your birthday, <laughs> and this is, this is what you do. Yeah, refresh. Happy birthday recharge. to Max Bredos, by the way. I, I saw a lot of fans uh, reach out to you and it was a big warmly birthday. celebrate with you. As you no, know, you don't want to mention. You don't have to tell it. them that. No okay. one said that. Okay, yeah. that's why I kept very quiet, but I got something. I posted it, and then people were reaching out, and it was very touching, and uh, I feel very blessed. So, thank you, everyone. Uh, I mean, a lot I of birthdays are in and around your birthday. Larry Friedman? Larry Friedman was Sarah there. Sarah Takata, who runs broadcast. What's hers? Her birthday? I think her birthday is the same day as Larry as Larry's. Shoot. You didn't late. wish your happy birthday. Oh, you're fine. I'm terrible at this. I'm terrible. There he goes. There he goes. Beautiful. So, uh, I know we all had a, an about. interesting week. And uh, Vince, I talked to him. We've got to talk about <sighs> the decision in the 98th minute okay. at Dignity Hill Sports Park. Because I can't. I am completely swamped. I go, I get it. Mm-hmm. But we have to start to talk about it. Before we get into that, a uh, very happy to say that Ilya Sanchez will be joining us here. And you'll also we'll be talk- talking about that. You'll be talking about it and how you process it. And, uh, you know, and L- this is a tough one. We know the this is really important for the fans. But this is an LAFC team that uh, has won their first two road games, lost this third one, but not from a complete lack of effort at mm-hmm. the end of that game in the second half. We're once again full throttle substitutions coming in making an impact it was pretty uh it was very cool to see that it was great to be part of that game overall and uh it's disappointing but i mean when you look at layers of disappointing yeah uh it got shifted a little bit because uh some of the decisions that were made which we'll get into it but this is something where you know i you can only i felt only pride of saying i can't believe this is my club and the way they fought for that result yeah i left and i took a second to process it and really kind of put it all together and try to leave out kind of the the refereeing decision but just try to make whole of what I saw. And what I said after the game was, I didn't think I learned anything new about LAFC. I know that they still are not playing their best, but are one of the better teams, in at least in the conference, if not the entire MLS. Um, I know that they make tremendous changes at halftime. The, the small adjustments, it's not even just the uh, substitutions, which from Steve Trundle and his staff have been great, but it's, it's the adjustments. That second half, the way they came out, a little bit more on the front foot, a little bit more man-to-man, a little bit higher intensity, that was a great adjustment. And lastly, it's just like, yes, it's a loss, and that's a house of horrors for LAFC, but again, I, I, just, I feel like this is still a very, very good team. I'm just very, very sad more than anything, and now we're going to talk about it, just the decision, just to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, we had, so we had. Oh, we that's had, so hard. It's you, so hard to be like this and then just get hit in the stomach. Yeah. You were in the suite with us. Uh, also in the suite, Dayan Yakovic, forever black and gold, which was so incredible to see Dayan. It was seen a, him a long great time. day because a lot of guys were out. A lot of the LA crowd from the LFC and Galaxy were all out there. Dayan, Matt Reese came in. Matt Reese. Uh, did a Rodney, very bad yes, yes impression. He, he, he loves you. Yeah, <laughs> he's one of the he's one of the best really guys this you. league has ever produced. He, he literally picked Max up off the ground, bear hug, <laughs> picked him up off the ground. Uh, Rodney Rodney Wallace, former MLS player, Portland Timbers, NYCFC, uh, Sporting KC, and Rodney. I'll give Rodney credit. So throughout the whole thing, he kept he kept filming me. Uh, he did say he lost the footage, thankfully. Uh, he kept filming. And he keeps going, "Yo, you're big stressed, huh?" And I'm like, "Hey, leave me alone, man. <laughs> Just leave me alone." He goes, "He goes, don't worry, dude. It's gonna be two to two." Oh. And I go, and this was at two 0 And I go, "You think?" He goes. The get one around the 81st minute, and then, and what was it, 79th? 70, yeah. 79th, he's like, they'll get one then. He's like, and then extra time, don't worry. He's like, there's going to be a lot of extra time in this game. And he was, he was I, right. I told you that. Uh, stoppage time, and he was right. Yeah, you both were right. I'll give you both credit. And uh, so when they scored that second goal, we went nuts. Rodney Alves, because even if you're not supporting, oh. if you're just a neutral, that's just the most thrilling moment in the game. But the second we realized that he was walking over to the monitor, we went... Which means, by the way, the percentage is uh, like 80%. Yeah. If they walk to the monitor, Which they're going to probably we change look it. Into, right? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I guess... It's a big number. Yeah, it's a big number. Maybe it's down a bit, but when I asked that question last season, it was around there. We didn't talk for a full three minutes, like while it was going on, and then even after he announces it's no goal, we just stood there silent. And I think... Terrified. At least for me, here's what it was for me. It felt embarrassing. Because, like, we had celebrated... We'd gone a little bit weird. <laughs> we're hugging each other. We're high-fiving. It and never then, happened. And then they go, oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, 
that never happened. <laughs> uh, it just felt embarrassing to me. You should be embarrassed. No, I'm kidding. I should be. Uh, it was... Uh, it was pretty loaded, and look, again, it was a very special occasion, and the, the LAFC supporters, again, exceeding expectations. And I know they, the, the pop that they had, and then they had to sit there, mm -hmm. and they had to feel, uh, you know, like it was, all, yeah. it, all, it was all a horrible dream. Yeah, I don't want to bring it up to them when I see them, but I, when I get out there on Sunday, I'm going to ask a few people, like, what was it like to celebrate? That's a great if, idea. If, I'd love if I felt embarrassed in that suite, I can't imagine, like, this, just the sheer madness of that celebration and then as people slowly tap each other and go hold on they're walking over to the monitor just like the how the vibe just comes down and yeah. it just creeps you out freaks you out creeps you out they should make a horror movie we could get uh, the var horror movie you know who john carpenter still maybe that's that's yeah. a good project for him you know who would sign off on that dave denholm <laughs> hates var and he calls it a house Ooh, of he was look i didn't like var and uh, i've learned to live with it because um, it's not going anywhere, right. but it ha the, the way it's used, we've really got to keep tabs on this because it could get away from us. We and have seemed to l have lost uh, both the spirit think about that and the actual wording of what we're supposed yeah. to use here. Because we'll, we'll talk about the very last call, but it's, for me, it's the whole amalgamation of everything. It's the Carlos Vela header where the mandate is to keep the flag down. And you and I have watched games where we were like, that's offside. Put the flag up. That's offside. That's offside. And then the goalkeeper almost gets close to making a play. Finally, they call it. We're like, oh, thank God. Somebody could have got hurt. But this was one of those bang, bang plays where, like, absolutely keep the flag down. They don't. And you go, okay. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, maybe he got it right. And then later in the second half, Carlos Vela's clean in on goal. Uh, Grand Sear catches up to him, makes a tackle from behind. Clean tackle, I would say. Nothing wrong with that tackle. Grand Sear's tackle on Vela. Grand Sear's tackle on Vela, fine. Totally clean. But a second later, the flag goes up, and the referee calls offside. And Steve Tronolo makes a Steve Tronolo made a beeline to the fourth official, and I asked him today. I said, "You didn't care about the tackle, did you?" He goes, "No, it was the dumbest offside call I've I've seen." And so that already puts it in your mind. Now you're like, "Wait, we're not playing with a full deck here," you know what I mean? And so that's to me the, that's the, the terrifying part. That's not the terrifying the, part. Not the VR. The terrifying part is yeah. And then the video comes out. So now let's get to the to the to the the meat of it. The, yeah. the 90th minute call. Well, it's um. I like the video. The pro video. The video. Listen, pro, and uh, I got an email from Howard Reb Webb. Obviously, he knows the LAFC. He goes, feel free to share this. This is the way we saw it. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, some transparency where you hear Chris Penso communicating with the VAR official, whose name escapes me right now. But having that moment is, is great. Because in years past, there was no transparency. Right. Officials were not held uh, uh, over the coals and go, why did you do that? Maybe one day they'll do that. It seems like it's possibly heading into that decision, but you want to protect them, and I understand why. But uh, I, I got that, and then I, I had a back and forth with him about what you get reviewed. And I, I guess I'll start off with this, Vince, and I'll get your thoughts uh, just to follow up on VAR. So my favorite VAR decision that is kind of it's – it's a rule that's come up, and it's kind of gone part and parcel with VAR is – if an attacking player, you if the ball hits his hand, intentional or not, if it hits his arm and it, it leads into a goal, goal is annulled. I go, right. that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's it hits his arm. Critical. There's no there's no gray area. Yep. Okay. If a guy's offside, even if he's a little bit offside, okay, he's offside. That is a pretty crystal clear handball kind of rule too. This one with the deliberate or not deliberate attention of the defender mm -hmm. is a judgment call right. maybe one degree above it i don't know we started with clear and obvious and then we start we went immediately into yeah. the intent of the player and deciding that was not deliberate yeah. touch i could have a less than sincere conversation with you that there was a deliberate play by nick depew of, of, of doing that i'd probably lose it but it's still a discussion i don't know if you would so this is my it's, this is turns, my take there's on still it. a discussion if you are a defender and now we're trying to get in the mind of the defender so let's do it then let's get in the mind of a defender if i'm less than that's five a slippery yards slippery slope well, to do on var i know but I'm let's just saying, get in the but, mind but that's of the what defender. they did they said it was not a deliberate touch i would say this anytime a defender is less than five yards from his goal and facing the ball look there's times when it could hit off you and you don't know you, you know what you're doing? You're deliberately trying to stop a goal because you are terrified at that moment. You're running towards your own goal. He turns his body. It touches him. He's just trying to get any little bit of contact on it yeah. to knock that ball off. So to me, that's Intense, deliberate. deliberate. So uh, then they said the second one, which also hits the pew, and you're like, well, it's the when same they, thing. Now they go, well, but that's a save. And they I'm, said, and well. That's where I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. 
But that's, look, I think it's unfair to the officials to put him in that situation. Mm -hmm. And we heard Chris Pencil, they're going, good job. And I go, uh, short conversation. Short conversation. I, I want to make the officials good guys. I want them to, to feel whole and say, this is how we do it. And they feel, they feel they've made the right decision here, but we could argue till we're red in the face about what is deliberate. And that brings us right. But you no, know, that brings if us that's back the up, case, you don't reverse a call. That brings us back up to clear and obvious. No, yes. If we can argue. And that was a, that was the back and forth with a few galaxy fans. Most have been actually uh, kind hearted about this, which is, a, which is a welcome. Look, we, we've yeah. seen this very differently. If it was, if it was, a, the, the, of the, course, the roles were reversed. But I got no, a, no doubt I, about it. I got a couple people and look, you can disagree with me, but I got a couple of people that go cut and dry, not even controversial. And I'm like, you, you're kidding me. Pro has to come out and make a whole video where they're, Liberoing players are putting, you know, they're like, hey, does anybody here know Photoshop? We got to get somebody to get in here, get some graphics. And you're telling me it's not controversial? Come on. Like, you could tell me you believe that it was offside, and I could say, okay, yeah, yeah that's, you're right. That was the call that they made. I've heard so that a maybe lot. you're right, but not controversial. That was the most controversial play we might see all season. And I, I think your point about pro is very valid. They, that get out quick, and they wanted to, uh, they wanted to, I think they put alleviate. it out thinking, we did a pretty good job here, huh? They did, but they still put it out. It's a head scratcher, man. Look, we don't want to keep dwelling on this. And when we talk with Ilya Sanchez, we want to move forward. But I will tell you this, you know, people within the club and everyone, you know, they want to they want to keep this flame alive so that this can improve. And Pro wants to improve it. We have a conversation with them all the time and they want to make this as seamless as possible. Some of their rules I love. Uh, it's just some of the implementations not there. I'm on record as saying the next big hurdle for MLS is, and MLS will say it's our TV deal. I, I say it's referees. You can't, you can't have a product like this where we don't know what it is week to week um, and, and bring in players where every player we've talked to is like, I don't know what's going on. Well, I, I think that plays into the TV deal because people watch this incredible reaction and then they're sitting here going, what's going on? Yeah. New fans going, what is this? They're and like, this they're is like, what soccer's become? No wonder we don't like it. I'm just saying. I mean, no, I'm disagreeing with so you. That's like, a bombshell, well, though. Well, that's... remember, we've, we've, you know, MLS 2.0, 3.0, wherever we're at, it was better players, which we've gotten better players, and we've gotten different ways to get younger and older, better players. Then came stadiums. We've got those stadiums. I think then came coaches. We've got coaches like our, our original coach, Bob Bradley. I think Steve Trenolo falls in that. The guys that with big ideas that are, that are out there in Patrick the landscape. Vieira, Patrick Vieira. Um, and so forth has to be officiating. Because you, you can't tell me that this would cut it in Italy, Germany, Spain, or England. That would have been, I don't, I, I can't, I can't even fathom what the reaction would have been. When we were in the suite, we were like, oh man, this mother's gonna burn down. <laughs> we were like, you can't take that away. And, uh, it just, Is it too naive to say, get rid of the deliberate, not deliberate? I would think, I'd want to kick it to the lowest common denominator and say, just say, if it hits a defender, mm -hmm. <laughs> the ball is live and the player's not offside. Again, I, like or I said. Or is that you, too simplistic? If you're within the six yard box and, you try, and you're facing the ball, then you're trying to deliberately stop the ball. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, should, we talk, should we get off the referees and talk about like, how the game actually played out now for people? Sure. Do people want to hear about any of the tactical stuff or anything like that? Or is it still just, it's all referees all the time? It's tricky. It's tricky. But it was, I, I, I will just repeat again, I was, how, I, I was impressed in a lot of categories. Mm -hmm. We talked to a lot of these players. This was really important to them. Uh, it, I, I wanted to find a way to temper expectations because winning three straight road games, especially in a big rivalry game, is hard to do anywhere. Mm. This team, again, I was... Steve Trinolo and the, the, the substitutions, you know, Tajiri Shradi, we're all saying, oh, he's going to bring in Chicho. Tajiri Shradi came in and made him look good again. Yeah. Uh, Latif Blessing took, took came a in. Took to get up to it. Latif yeah. was great. Phenomenal. Uh, like I said, the, the slight adjustments, I thought that in the second half, he asked his midfield to go a little more man-to-man, -man, yeah. not be so passive. And when they were getting after them, they were turning the ball over more, which was helping Tajiri Shradi get out in transition. Uh, yeah, I mean, I watched, look, you know what I was thinking? Remember, everyone Chicho scored a goal off the bench. Chicho scored a goal, so and, he, and he showed that he could play as a, as a true number nine, just kind of be a little bit of a battering ram, which was good. Carlos, there was a, okay, a couple people after this game said, I need, I, I think Carlos was disinterested. He had five shot creating actions, which was the most on either team. Obviously, probably should have had a goal. He creates Chicho's goal for sure. He's also in on this goal that yeah. the. So I, I don't I was know. Like, I, I think about the whole game, and obviously you can't give these goals, but there's so many moments. I go, man, yeah. LFC, we're really good here. Yeah. This was, you could put it in, throw the results out, which is impossible to do, but this is one of their best performances, 0 to 90. Mm -hmm. in, and the ability to, to put the pedal to the metal a little bit and still not give up goals. Because I was just about to say, what's the latest goal we've given up in a game? Yeah. Because remember that used to be our MO? That was the thing. Like 80th minute later, everyone's like hiding under the here table, wondering what's going <laughs> to happen. But I don't think we've given, have we even given up a goal in a second half? 
Stats? I don't think we have. Because the Not Orlando, Vancouver no, goal. Vancouver, no. Orlando. And Galaxy right didn't. We haven't given up a goal in the second half. Stats La Rosa coming through. We haven't. That go. was a big issue. Uh, Kellen Acosta, man, our man over the match, right? You yeah. said it. I agree I think with it you. Was either Carlos or him. But it was, uh, that's a big step up for him because he still was finding his way here. He had to play a diff couple Cheeky different positions. Cheeky some good crosses later it's, in the game. It's very promising. And when you add it, Franco Escobar is back. Should be ready to get some minutes. Yep. Eddie Segura is looking better and better all the time. And then whatever happens this summer is nothing. But this is still something that the result, I know, it's hard to overcome. And this, is, uh, this wasn't because LAFC didn't deserve it. They did. Yeah, it, listen to Ilya. Uh, everything, everything that he has to say in this second half of our, of our podcast is phenomenal about the way the team set up, uh, their game model. And he said, you know, I don't know if we deserved all three points, but we definitely didn't deserve to lose. And I, I generally hate that phrase, but it, <laughs> literally they were tied at one point. So Because it, you hate the phrase because you hear it so often in this sport. Yes. It's like, like soccer and justice are complete strangers. But it's just that's the um, – that seems to be the, the MO when we play the Galaxy. They, they create just a couple chances. They only had two shots on target, both go in. We create That's an MO from a countless. season ago that you want to well, so on shed. The, on the, I think it was on the Expansion Mansion Show, which is our MLS show that we do on 110 Football. It's 4 p.m. on Mondays on YouTube. There you go. Uh, I asked Mariano Trujillo, I said, if you just flipped Chicharito and Carlos Vela, which team's better? And he goes, ooh, that's a really good question. And we... With the way that they're creating so many chances, he's like, if you have Chicharito on the end of those chances, that team's lights out. Not saying I want that, because I like Carlos Vela's game. Chicharito is more of a... Can we have both? On the end? Yeah, can we have both? <laughs> I mean, Chicharito uh, is all coming up, and it is the worst for Tata Martino, because now everyone's going, Chicharito, Chicharito, national team. Chicharito. And we know Carlos Vela's pretty dug his heels, and he's like, even though he would be a very valid addition to a team that needs a little... A kick in the trousers, I think, offensively at least. But the Chicharito things come up because the result, he's been great. Uh, and he only needs one to two chances. He doesn't need one or chances, but that's, that's all it is. You gotta understand the player. About him, yeah. There was that one second half where he just ran. <laughs> Remember, he's like, <laughs> yeah, full bore to get on the end of it. It was scary. How about the one where he handled he, it? Where he looked up and he was like, I don't want to run. So let me just kick it towards Maxime Crapo. And Crapo's like, <laughs> Come on, guy. I think okay. We, I think Jordan we, Harvey's we, making me. Wish, I, need to, I need to get a workout in. I'm gonna get. A, I was gonna work out here on our Tuesday so morning tape. I think we can put it on there. We because we've we've talked so much about it, and I think it's healthy for everyone to to, to push forward. We have to push forward. We have to push forward. We're, whether first you want place, to or not, we're playing a game on Sunday. First place club You're back at home. Place. You're gonna get some home games here because remember you just got a couple yep. away and some cup. really exciting ones. Open Cup, a Philadelphia game, which is the best in the league. That could be the top two teams. That's a huge occasion. That's the yep. first week of March. Let's talk about Open Cup really quickly because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are still maybe not 100% clear what it is. So we haven't played in two years. We had that run into the semifinal in our inaugural year. Yes. And this is a Quarter chance final. to get a trophy. Quarterfinals, Quarterfinals the year, the year where they, uh, the Timbers got us. So now they're back, and you come in at the third round. There's 64 teams. So if you win five, you get a trophy. Mm -hmm. And you get a ticket to the CONCACAF Champions League, which I know so, that's so important because we had such a blast the last time we were in there yep. in 2020, almost won it. So Open Cup, home game, Orange County SC, and there's a connection there because it used to Former be in the farm. Yeah. And the farm. <laughs> it used to be in the farm. <laughs> little baseball. But it's uh, check out LAFC.com for tickets. It's a fun day out, middle of the week. If you can't come in some of the weekends, this could be the beginning. And you want to get started. You're supposed to beat Orange County. You get to the fourth round. You might get a good draw. And then lo and behold, we're Bank of California yeah, we Stadium. Don't, we don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but a lot of times for these early Open Cup rounds, you buy a ticket and it's G GA. So if you get there, you can be as close to the field as you can get to your seat. So that's kind of cool. And Orange County, It's like the FA Cup for MLS. Yeah, and Orange County is the USL champions. So it's an interesting storyline. And then if you win this game, like you said, it's only five to win a trophy, but you win this game, you come up against the winner of San Diego and the Galaxy. That would be fantastic. Yes, it would. That would be exciting. So get into the U.S. Open Cup. Remember, it was gone for two years, mm -hmm. and now it's back, and this is a great chance for some young players that we, a lot of you have been asking. What about? Uh, just the depth in general. Just not the even depth just the in young general. Players. I mean, they're going to play to win. This is going to yeah. be important. Uh, that, is the, uh, that is the outlook from the club. They want to win trophies, but there could be some opportunities for Tony Leone or Christian Torres or some other guys to. Danny Masovsky. Danny Masovsky or guys who Tom are McCarthy. jumping off the bench to come in. This is where the depth's going to be tested in multiple competition so check out that open cup now sunday early kickoff i know people easter sunday 
Easter Sunday, so we got to come in there at Sporting Kansas City, a historically a very good team. The former team of Villiers Sanchez, so we'll talk about that, but they're really laboring. However, you, they get over here and get a win, they're right back into the mix of it. That's how the West does. They came off a result where they were in front of Nashville and ended up losing it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, health has been an issue, but they had Russell and Shallowy and Kyrie Stevenson in the attack good enough. Haven't scored a lot of goals this season. Kyrie this Shelton. What did I say? Stevenson. Kyrie, Kyrie Shelton, sorry. Uh, Kyrie Stevenson does uh, children's books. I don't know. <laughs> There was a Kyrie Stevenson. They did. You know, they, they probably should have reloaded a little more. I feel like this might yeah, be a little bit shorthanded with Polito, who was but unable to play. You just named three quality players off the top, uh, and they're desperate for points. So you can't look past them. Uh, but yeah, they're struggling a little bit. And they're very well coached. This is a, Always. This is a team that's going to, it's it's an elite club in the West, although the standings don't show it. But you got to take advantage of your home games. I here. Yeah, and I would say that if you can get out quick and get out early, maybe get a lead and, and add to it, maybe a 2 0 lead. I, I, it's not that they'll completely wither, but I think with the way their season is going, if it's the 60th minute and you're up 2-0, they might just kind of pack it in a little bit. I'm just saying, teams do that. And LAFC got to protect the, protect the house. That's why you win the road games, so yep. you can come back here and you can show off in front of the home fans. And you know, We'll get to this Ilya Sanchez interview. And again, that is honestly one of my favorite dates on the calendar as I go back to the Galaxy again, which I promised I didn't. Just because the anticipation of the supporters filling up that corner and knowing this is an L.A. event, and all eyes, and, you know, the, it, it brings out the best of the Galaxy supporters and their club because they know it's the importance. Every year we tick off another one of those is very special because this match becomes, gets closer to being the biggest one here. I don't want to be rude, certainly to the Cascadia teams to say it's there, but, man, it is. Hard to deny it. Well, with the way the two teams are playing, because the Galaxy are, are much improved from last season, you got to say it's the best rivalry. Yeah. It'll, it'll come and go. There will be times where it probably, it probably won't be. I know in the stands it will always be one of the biggest rivalries, like the Cascadia Derby can be. Uh, but it's not just the stands right now. It's on the field. And then, obviously, we finally got Vela Chicharito. So you, second to none this year. So a great start for LAFC with what they were able to do prior to the Galaxy game. They get their first defeat. Not the team you want to lose to, but... It's the goal is to finish at the top, A, to get back in the postseason, B, to host some games at Bank of California Stadium in that postseason and, and lift some trophies. You have some big opportunities here. You have the Sporting Kansas City game, Sport U.S. Open Cup, off and running, and uh, this is going to be a fun stretch here. Look at it this way. You want to play well because you don't want to have to go back there. Because the next time, the next time you would have to go back there, be in the playoffs. You don't want to have to go back there. No, you don't. And LFC is a very good shop, very good shape. So we will be back to talk with Ilya Sanchez about what happened over the weekend and to spin it forward here. We're just getting started in the season. This is the Max and Vince podcast on Inside LAFC. Make sure you check out all the great stuff on 110 Football. My, my, my guy Vince here is, is knocking hard. it out of the park as a host. Expansion Mansion, especially the LAFC 360, to get a really nice bow on what happened this past weekend. We'll be back with Ilya. And we are back, as we always like to do here, with a very special guest here on Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. I do want to point out how excellent Ilya Sanchez's hair looks. And you did it just for us, correct? Little well, Only for us. For you. <laughs> <laughs> only for you. Not for training. But not for, for of you. course not. You of course not. You look great. Um, coming off this Galaxy game, I know we talked to you before and being part of the new players, this was important. Even though it's the LAFC Galaxy, you knew the importance of it. So having played the first game, your emotions about uh, sharing that with new and old teammates. Well, we, my feeling is that we missed uh, one of the two opportunities we have uh, in the season um, for our biggest game, or at least for our biggest rival. So um, obviously, we are disappointed with the result, uh, with the outcome. It's not uh, what we expected, uh, what we wanted. And in my opinion, um, we didn't deserve uh, to lose. Um, that's not much uh, to take from the game, but what we can take and analyze is that uh, our game was better than in the first five games, or at least in the two games on the road mm -hmm. that we've played before Galaxy. This was better than those two. I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, and A lot of people agree with you, yeah. I think so. I think what the coach uh, wanted to, uh, the message that he wanted to uh, send to us, it's, it was that we were much better from box to box mm. 
um, but we were worse inside the boxes. So attacking and defending in the boxes um, was uh, worse, or the, the, the percentage of, of uh, accuracy was lower. But uh, the game on the field uh, between boxes was uh, uh, improved from our uh, previous performances. So yeah, again, um, we are angry. Uh, we obviously don't like to lose um, against the Galaxy, against n no other team, but also against the Galaxy. But um, we cannot just be stuck on what happened uh, last Saturday. And um, we have a next opponent Sunday at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are getting ready for, for that one. So a train of th thought that's kind of swirling around, and I don't know where I stand on it now, because when I look back, I'm not sure, and I'll tell you why, is that you guys have started slow in a couple games since Colorado. But then I look at that Galaxy game, and you guys actually had five shots each in the half. They score their two. Um, but if Carlos doesn't get called offside, and he hits that one, he nails the one that hits the post, it's two to two. So within the group, do you guys feel like you've started slow in a couple games? Or is that just a perception because of uh, the way the finishing has gone? No, and we had uh, two clear chances, or at least two clear opportunities in the first two minutes of Galaxy game. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what our approach to the game was the right one. Uh, we were not low, but we were not too high. We, we were just focused on, on what we had to do. And uh, unfortunately, we were um, punished in their first two chances. And that was uh, a lot. Um, I think that any other team would have just dropped their arms and stop, stop uh, running or getting crazy about uh, chasing the result. But uh, we were mature enough to um, keep trying uh, with our weapons, and, and I think that it almost worked. Uh, so I agree with you or with this uh, sense about uh, the team started uh, slow a couple games. Um, I don't think it was the case last sun Saturday, but uh, I agree that uh, they were better uh, finishing their actions, and, and um, that's why uh, they got the result. The end of that game, to go from the height to tie and work so hard and score a goal to go. And I know before we started recording, you said mentally I've recovered. How do you recover from, I mean, not just the low, but the high and that very quick transition in this new world of VAR. And we saw Mamadou fall on the ground looking and everyone holding on. That's, that's quite a lot to absorb. It's a lot because it was a call where you can call pretty much anything uh, from offside, that that's what happened with the VAR revision, to not offside, that was the initial call from the lineman and the referee on the field, uh, from a second potential offside on Latif, uh, or <laughs> not an offside on Latif because the defender deflects a lot. <laughs> and it creates a new uh, play, from a penalty kick when Carlos cross the ball, Latif touch it, and then the next defender mm -hmm. touch it with the hand. So Chicho was coming from behind, and then the ball ends on fall. So at that moment, uh, you just try to talk to the referee, uh, explain your point of view, try to uh, make him stick with his decision. But uh, after that, it's just a, a shitty Sunday, uh, trying to stay at home. Um, do everything but think about soccer and then uh, for the next training session the first in the week just um, try to get together uh, review your your mistakes and mm -hmm. and uh, improve them during the week i mean with the last time we got to talk to you we got the chance to talk to you after a win and after a team of the week performance and we asked you how do you how do you break down games after that mm -hmm. i'm going to ask you now the flip side how do you process the losses you said you kind of do you just kind of go in in a hole and just don't be around anyone? How are you doing it? Well, it's always the same process, trying to analyze the game. I watch the game again. And, and um, I guess unconsciously, when we win, I try to be more critic with my performances. And when we lose, I do the opposite. Uh, I try to analyze more uh, the strong, the strengths uh, of the game and, and what, what we did uh, right. And uh, knowing that uh, we know that we've made mistakes and that we have to, to 
correct those ones, but uh, also trying to build up this confidence because this non-stop. Uh, we have an, a next game on Sunday and and we are first place in, on the West. So um, that's where we want to be at the end of the season, knowing that it's a, um, a big hit uh, losing against the Galaxy, but uh, that we will have our uh, revenge um, in July. Very nice, but and uh, I think you got Max fired up. I got fired. Up. <laughs> but I th Let's go. Look, last season, uh, LAFC and the Galaxy both missed out, and I'm a big believer that a high tide. I always use that expression raises all ships because you get LAFC and the Galaxy, and after that game, after the weekend, LAFC first, Galaxy second. It's like as it should be. It's it. That's to me is a very exciting development for LA. Granted, uh, I would like it the other way. Maybe the Galaxy third or fourth after that yeah. win. Uh, but let's spin it forward. So, this, as you said, uh, winning on the road is very difficult. That is a road game, even though it's in L.A. and you have to approach it. You do approach it the same way, right? Do you, do you try and treat that as a road game um, as much as you can? Or you say, hey, we're, we're home. We can get there in a bus. And You mean uh, playing against the Galaxy? Yeah, uh, approaching a game where you're in the same city. In this team and the game model that we try to uh, achieve or, or, or put in, into performances, um, we don't focus too much if we are playing at home or on the road, other than because when we play at home, we have the extra energy coming from the stands, right? Uh, and obviously it's special for all of us to, to play at the bank, but um, our game model, and I would say game plans too, don't change too much uh, from playing at home or on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, how, you did have that pocket, the group of fans in the corner and you guys acknowledged that was incredible. We felt like, uh, we were playing for them. Uh, there were too many. Uh, just seeing the contrast between white and, and black yeah. uh, in the stands made us feel uh, more powerful. Um, and we really appreciate uh, everything that uh, they do for us, that you all do for us, because uh, at the end of the day, we are all here together. Um, and obviously, again, we wanted that result on the weekend, but uh, we have a bigger uh, goal uh, in mind uh, for the longer run. So let's look ahead to Sunday. And actually, one of the reasons why we brought you on as the first repeat guest is because we knew you could talk so eloquently about that game. I know that a lot of people are going to look towards this game and say, we need to talk to Ilya because it's his <laughs> former team. We'll talk about it, but I'm curious. Does it register really with you? Is it, is it another game? I know you, you have great friends there. Um, that's obviously where you got your start in MLS. But is it what is it to you? What is this game Sunday? For me, it's uh, first of all three points uh, to keep us on the first place. Um, but it's also a game that uh, I'm trying to be very smart about. And, and uh, obviously, I know that team very well, uh, all their, their players, uh, their coach, uh, coaching staff. And um, I will try to take advantage of that, um, knowing that it's not going to be easy because emotions are going to be there. But uh, when you know someone, uh, you know, obviously, their strengths, mm. but also their weaknesses. So um, I think that it's a team very well known in the league. Mm. So uh, most of my teammates are aware of uh, that they can be a dangerous team. Uh, but I also think that uh, if we do the right things on the field, uh, we are going to be able to uh, get the win. But that's that's even helped you in previous games because I remember I think we was did it Maxime it Maxime that Maxime said Kellen helped with and Mark Colorado Dos Santos. and Maxime yeah. and Mark Dos Santos both told laid it out to you guys hey guys this is kind of what they're going to do so I think what you're saying is you want to pass along that same kind of knowledge to the rest of your teammates I want to be just uh, ready uh, we want to be aware uh, to not have a, a slow start um, because we know that they come with the need of points and getting results and what could be better than having not getting the results and playing the first place. You want to turn, it's like a, a turning point for any team uh, to come play us, LAFC, and, and uh, knowing that uh, a good result for them could boost them up for the rest of the season. Um, the coach, coaching staff, uh, scouting people uh, probably have the report ready uh, for when we have to to review it as a team, but uh, yeah, anything I can help with, uh, happy to to do that. And probably in training, when you see it, Fender, hey, this sporting player, this is the kind of thing he does. You got to keep an eye on those kind of things would happen uh, this week. Yeah, uh, I mean, we try to um, put in training uh, 
some of the ideas that uh, we expect from the opponent uh, on the weekends. But um, again, we are a team that uh, should focus on our own performances, uh, especially with the ball. Um, and uh, it won't change that much from one opponent to the other uh, because um, no matter how good you are as a team, you always will have weaknesses. So for us, it's just getting better at what we do best, but also knowing that teams can punish us in one, two, three ways, and that we have to ha manage that and have that uh, under control. Fantastic. Ilya, as always. He's going to take our job. He's just going to do this podcast by himself. <laughs> <laughs> And it was great. Look, I, was, it was, I, I know the, the results are not what you wanted, but to be Don't part of that. Don't say that because we'll get you here every week. Yeah, we <laughs> Don't say that. Especially, you, you said something earlier this season. Because I'll talk after a win or a loss. And hopefully we don't, we don't have too many losses. But this is very valuable to us because we can get into that, that process, right, of doing it. So uh, it was very special to be part of that game, to see you guys. Because I saw the supporters in you. And then it, it made you feel like, we're, as you said, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. So a we very are, special afternoon. Let me say something. For me, as you mentioned at the beginning, uh, as a newcomer, in this team, um, I didn't want to leave uh, Galaxy Stadium with anything but a win. Uh, to start that record against them, um, it would have been special to me. But um, I'm sorry to say this because some of the fans probably are still thinking about that result, mm -hmm. at least until we get the next win. But uh, for us, it has to be something that we put in the past, we put behind, and sure. that uh, we focus on our training sessions every day to, to be able to get that win for them, to be able to forget. And with, th with that, we put it behind us. There you now go. Now we move forward and look to remain in first place, which is... Uh, it's a great, it's the best place to be. So we thank Ilya Sanchez. Make sure all of you check out uh, the podcast, Inside LFC, Max and Vince podcast. Check out some of the old ones in our library uh, to catch up with all the latest and greatest. Signing off here from the glorious training facility, the Performance Center here in Alhambra. It's Max and Vince and Ilya.